with a bit of luck, this is the final print of the bulk forearm. That was a print error, so not quite sure why it happened, but these things do, very minor, and will be covered completely by the shell. And other than that, I'm pretty sure it can be assembled. 99%. So we're going to go for it. This is the one which took us so far. Some details missing in the wrist. Obvious stuff. But nonetheless. Only obvious when you try and put it together. Because then the pieces are no longer static, they're moving around. So predicting clearances is a tricky one. Feels like something that could be automated. Uh, has changed things a bit, so this is tidy now, instead of having this extra little cutout, which just kind of bugged me. Um, and yeah. Six overs transplant, a bunch of brass inserts to put in. The ligaments for the wrist figure eight. That's the free play in there. Keep working on that. Might need a spring. Don't know. We'll see. It might just be slack coming out of the system. It's quite a lot though. Hmm, something's happened there. Anyway, all to be done. And then the wrist tendons to connect up. So then the wrist will be powered. This last one uh, just plugs straight into the elbow. Uh, that piece to be finalised and printed. Well, that's you know, an hour tops. And then a full test, which will be all of the servos plugged in, um, but none of the wires cut yet. Uh, make sure everything works. And then trim all the wires. And then we're at the code stage. And call out to Big T, who's working on the code. <laughs> nice to be working with people. Um, so the hand was already controllable by um, Google Media Pipe, hand tracker. Uh, but we're going to try and get the arm running as well. So it will mirror. And that will be essentially taking the data read off the various tracking algorithms it will run I think three different algorithms to find the outline the person and the hand maybe just for two then don't know I have a feeling there's a third one comment what it is now um, and that will give detailed position so that should be quite interesting but very simple at this end it really feels like a sledgehammer cracking a nut we're using a phenomenal amount of technology to extract the position of someone's you know, main joints, elbows, wrists, and then down to the finger level. Finger level. And on the other side, there's just a tiny bit of limiting and scaling. It's being pumped straight out to the motor controllers. And that's a huge asymmetry. So the question is, what should we be doing with that data? Um, personally, I'm all up for generating an accurate 3D physics-based scene which will contain not just point clouds, but semantically labelled models. And models that include attributes and characteristics and predictions of what those objects can do. Which, you know, for some objects is fairly simple, but can also clearly include people. Um, and in, can include very detailed information about their faces, their hands, their postures. Um, and now clearly you can start to change that into words and you can use those words to generate stories or fit them into existing stories and then you can generate back into 3D visual information and you can run those scenarios together so it can start to, it can start to have a narrative. And this is really what <laughs> I started to get a bit of future shock here. Um, 
because this is an AI, which you better, you know, talk to and do all the things you can do with AIs now, um, but it'll start to have <laughs> its own stories. Um, and it will also start to have deep relationships with people because it will it will know it will know how to teach you how to get richer by knowing more about robots and that will change people's change people's lives and it will be integral to how that how, how that happens and the bit i'm interested in of course is it can help you learn how to build the hardware which also introduces an interesting symbiosis because the ai will require people at least in the beginning which you know is its own point at least in the beginning it will require people to build its body for it because it's too difficult these things are too intricate um, but clearly the aim is to make them dexterous is to make them as capable as possible so you've got to assume it reaches a point where it'll have enough robots of itself out there and kind of we're going to want that as well right because it's going to get boring if you're going to build a billion robots by hand that's going to get real tedious real fast um so of course you know the wheels of commerce and industry once once it's definitely going to make money that will all come to play um so you'll have factories churning these things out uh, so if we haven't if we haven't got it to play nice by then we could really be in trouble. But in the beginning, in the beginning, we will have control. We will. In the beginning, it will require people to build the body for it. So really, it, end, it ends up becoming, and this is where the alignment thing comes in. Um, you can't prove, you can't prove that it isn't lying to you. And you can't build an AI smart enough to check when another AI isn't lying to you, which is not also smart enough to lie to you. So <laughs> you won't know until it's too late. Uh, but nonetheless, we're clearly going to go on with it. Um, we're going to do our best. We're going to set it tests. There will be strange things coming up. But the point remains that in the beginning, it will require people to build the bodies for it. <laughs> I'm trying to teach people how to do this um, because it's what I know how to do. So there you go. Um, this is the V2 Dex hand, which is not finished yet, but needs to be very shortly because I'm meant to be showing it to the public in uh, two weeks now. So that really has to come together quickly now. Um, and that's fine. Because as long as there's no more mistakes, um, it only takes a day or so to assemble once you get good at it. <laughs> uh, getting good at it is something I've yet to do because as soon as I've finished one design, I start doing the next one. Um, but, you know, it's an object of finite complexity. So I am sure that with a little bit of incentive, price will plummet. These will be being churned out. Robots will be doing all sorts of interesting, useful stuff. Um, but behind it all, there is going to be this massive AI. And a lot of it, we don't understand. But we don't not eat because we don't understand how we digest our food. So clearly we're just going to go ahead and do it. Um, so I guess the... <laughs> all that's left. <laughs> Got to choose a side. Um, yeah. So, you know, either you're going to deeply understand some bit of AI or robots, and robots is a bit where I guess I come in. Um, you can be part of that, or you can be an observer. Because things are going to change. Thank you for listening. <laughs>